Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're going to continue our series on water catchment uh, system that we're putting on our farrowing barn up here on the hill. That's the building you can barely see in the background there. So if you want to find that video, I'll link to it here. But now it's time to make a stand to put our IBC tote on. That's the tank that we're going to have our rain catchment dump into. So we're going to fire up the mill and get something put together. Okay, so this is one of two IBC totes I recently picked up, reconditioned, food grade, um, big one. This is a, I can never remember, 300, 300 plus gallon, 330 gallon, I believe. But you can see it's, it's much taller than your typical IBC tote. In fact, this one is from the base, yeah, right at 53 inches. So what is that? That's uh, about four and a half a little over four and a half feet tall. So we've got eight feet. If you watch the other video, I've got eight feet where um, the downspout starts. And that's where uh, we want to be tucked underneath that. So that really gives me about um, what three, three and a half feet to work with there. So we're really not going to get that high off the ground. That should suffice enough to get just enough hydraulic pressure to be able to fill up a trough. So the plan is to mill something sturdy enough that can just be like a riser or just a stand for this to sit on. Again, this thing full is going to be over 2,400 pounds of weight, so we want to be able to accommodate that. So while I'm down there running the mill, I just wanted to remind everybody, we're going to do a drawing here um, about a week and a half for our Olight we're giving away. A drawing, so you just need to be on our email list. Go to redtoolhouse.com. You'll see a link for email newsletter. Sign up for that, and we'll put you in a drawing.
Okay, so that one log yielded four beams that are four and a half by five dimensionally, eight feet long. And they do have a little bit of wane on them. In fact, it's been waning most of the day. I know, actually, uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of bark still on it, a little bit of uh, loss, but uh, they're still going to be able to do what I, I need to do. They're going to, these four, you know, I'll cut in half, because I don't need eight foot long material. I'll cut them in half, and that'll give me the eight components I need to make up the main support sides for our riser. So I brought them in the shop here just to get them out of the rain since it's been raining nonstop the past several days and I can work on it in here. Don't like bringing green lumber into my workshop, but I'll keep them off any of my um, machinery tabletops so we don't get rust going.
Lower that bucket, if you would, please. Yep. Cute. That's good. All right, so we got our risers made. Um, I didn't show making the second one, obviously, because it's exactly the same. And uh, the plan is to... We're first going to try putting some center blocks down, set the riser on top of the center blocks, so obviously we don't have wood coming in contact with the ground. Um, I measured by the time we get the tank on, we're going to be pretty high, pretty close to our downspout, and I have to make that... Uh, turn to get into the center of the downspout. So we'll see. If that doesn't work, then obviously we'll take the uh, center blocks out of there and go without. Are shoving stuff? Yep. What can I do? What do you want me to do? Just sit there and look pretty. All right, let's. Um, Sorry, I can't do this. Once you get on this side, then we're going to turn it 90 degrees. Precision. Nothing but precision here at Red Tool House. <laughs> Woo, that's close to the top. Precision with the stick. <laughs> you want me to hold this in? That's it. We'll take the rest of that back and get it. $30 piece, that's all I needed. <laughs> Come on, Cletus. Okay, there. All right, so uh, that worked out actually as tight as I could get. I'd still be able to use my 45 degree angle uh, downspout pieces. So uh, as you see there, we've got uh, just a short little section coming out of the bottom of our downspout T, uh, 45 and then 45 into the tank. Now, one thing I'll do, right now I've just got that 45 dumping right into the tank. Um, what I'll do right where the lid would screw, and I'm not going to cut up my lid, but I'll just take some screen, some wire mesh, and put that over that lid and put some baling wire around it or something like that to tie it as a filter to keep 
keep all the big chunkies from coming out because I don't have don't have any grates or any strainers anywhere on the gutter system, so we'll strain it all here at the downspout side. So um, I think this is about as tall as we could get this and not interfere with the uh, flow of the downspout. Like I said, anything anything higher in my 90, my 45s wouldn't have worked. I would have had to have gone with 90s, and obviously that would have caused some leaking issues. But yeah, I know you people that have pigs, you're already saying, well, how are you going to keep the pigs from knocking that over? Well, hopefully when it's got water in it, you know, again, eight pounds per gallon, we're looking at full 2,400 pounds plus the weight of this. That's why I made these, uh, uh, this little riser so girthy, just to hopefully uh, keep them from knocking it over. But as you can see around the barn, they love to come scratch against the barn. So they're gonna come scratch against this. They're gonna do those things. So probably what I could do is take some boards, some scrap board pieces here, screw them on to make a lip that would keep the tank from either blowing off when it's empty or a pig from putting his nose up and knocking it off. Um, it's not really going to keep it from knocking the whole thing over. Again, I don't know that my smaller ones would knock it over. Merida, much of a jerk as she is, sometimes she could definitely do it if she was so inclined. But we'll see how it goes. I can even drive some T-posts in maybe to try to keep it um, kind of fenced off, or not, not fenced off, try to keep it in its, in its position. But we'll just wing it as we go. That's how we do things right here. So you know what's interesting about these IBC totes? So this is the 330 gallon one, which the other ones I have are the 250 or 275, whatever it takes. Right? And um, they, the, the first four IBC totes I bought, the nozzle, this, this uh, valve system here, was threaded at something unique. And you actually, I had to get on Amazon and find the threaded adapter to go from this to a garden hose uh, specific for the size. And they're like $28. I'm like, my goodness, 28 that's over 100 bucks to get four of them up and going. So I didn't like that idea. I was a little aggravated about that. And then I was talking to my buddy about it, and Matt's like, well, no, all of mine thread per perfectly to two and a half inch PVC. So, oh, cool. I ran out and bought two and a half inch PVC. Still didn't work. So the four IBC totes I have are unique. Got these 330 gallon and the two and a half inch. Threads on like a dream, look at that, Woo! like it was meant to. So that is a $1.30 fix versus a $28 fix. And then of course, with my local um, box store, not having a complete reducer that makes sense, you have to just buy all these stair step pieces. So there's three components to reduce down to a threaded hose bib. So I'll have the hose bib threaded here. And if I was really feeling froggy for Merida, I could just put a pig nipple right there and she could just come drink from the whole thing. It'd be some pretty good PSI right in the snout, wouldn't it? <laughs> but uh, that's not the plan. The plan is to put the uh, hose bib in like this. We'll have a hose and I'll, of course I'll have to hang the hose up, I have to disconnect it and hang the hose up so the pigs don't chew it. They like to chew on garden hose. And uh, use this. So we've got uh, you know, what, about a three and a half foot drop, maybe a three foot drop. So that'll give me enough uh, water flow to be able to fill the trough and not stand here all day waiting for it. Again, the more water I get behind here, the more hydraulic pressure we'll have. Uh, so the plan will be to do that. Eventually, what I'd really like to do, which would be awesome, is to bury line, even if it's just a little black water line, bury it over, go down the, down the hill behind the barn here, over to the other pasture, where I can have a small trough set up. So I can water that pasture, obviously provide water here, and these are the two south pastures that don't have access to our uh, biggest stream that has water in it all year long. So these are, these are the pastures when they're in that uh, water would have to be carried. So uh, I'd say job well done. Now, uh, just need Elijah here to pray for some rain because I think the forecast says it's not going to rain for another week and a half. So we'll see how it goes. Actually, there's a 50% chance on Saturday because it always rains on Saturdays. And in case you all are wondering, have I tested this? Yes, we had a frog choker the night before last. And I came up and, and water was already eroded, uh, had eroded the dirt around behind here and even run in, into the inside of the barn. So it's definitely channeling water. So I'm anxious to get this in place and see how much it'll take up. I'm going to do some calculation below because I don't have my measurements yet. But I'm going to measure the roof line here and give you guys a rough idea of just how much water uh, volume we can get per inch of rain. And we get a lot of rain here in West Virginia. So just show you how much this one roof can collect and fill in this tank. So I have a feeling we'll have this tank full in no time. All right, we'll keep you all updated on the progress. Take care, everybody. 
So Kelly's fervent prayer may have paid off. We've got some rain coming. Looks like it's going to be a short storm, but it may work.